Oh, it's just got light and it's grim o'clock. Grim a la bim. It's rainy and wet and we're following up a really bad lead today. This could go horribly wrong or it could go nicely right. You'll have to come along and see, wouldn't you? Look at the state of me, I look knackered. Not used to these early mornings, mate. Right, we're at Blue House Farm today, which is in Essex. I'll put where it is here, along the bottom now. But I've come over with my mate Nick Lay, is there? We've got a YouTube channel. What's your YouTube channel called, Nick? Just Nick Lay, the wildlife photographer. Nick Lay, wildlife photographer. I'll put the link to his channel in the information below this one. But we've come over here because we haven't been over here for ages, Nick hasn't been over here for ages and neither have I <clears throat> now I see a post online saying oh I've seen this and I've seen that and I've seen the other and I thought oh that looks good and then last night Nick sent me a devastating devastating message saying someone's been over here and they've seen Naffle and they've ruined it and they've destroyed some of the habitat, they've done some work over and what happens is if you do work over wildlife reserve it just it just looks flattened and looks ruined but then it all grows back you got to, it looks worse before it gets better if you like anyway so with that we've come over so it can either go disastrously or it can go very well we'll have to go won't we if you don't go you don't know so let's go and have a look mate see what we see right big bertha got her on my shoulder because most things are going to be far away today and I'll show you where you park. There's only a little car park here. I don't know, we probably fit about 10 cars in that if you have to squeeze them in. <coughs> and there's your sightings board and your sort of main board with a map on. And a gate. And that's where we're off to. Let's go and see what we can see. So we've just seen a fox run across this little bit of grassland here up this bank and that disappeared so we might get another spot of that. There's a lot of geese over there. We've just seen a lot of brent or brent geese pull up out of this big flock of them come out of this field here. Got buzzed by a marsh area. I don't know if you can see over there in the back, sorry about the wind. There's a new barn owl box over there Nick tells me. But there's a, an existing barn owl box there. Now a few years back this was a wash with barn owls, this area, but apparently there's not been any here for a little while so the likelihood of seeing one of them is slim, but you never know. He's just putting his gloves on, it's a bit breezy and a bit brassy over here at the moment, but there's a few heights. And I got Marmite sandwiches, happy days. So I was just going to have a little look inside now, see what's about. I've seen a few things so far. 
There's a nice bit of flat marsh land in front of this one, so let's go and have a look. Unfortunately, come out of where I pointed to like a rocket had sunk in his mouth and it bolted across the field. Can't get a shot off. It was absolutely shifted. Nice to see those nice big healthy fox. But not a lot in this little hive at the moment. But we got all day, you never know. Just left the hide. There's not a lot there, really. But I've got a couple of grey herons sitting in front of me. And I think they're brent geese flying across there. Here comes the farmer. I'll let him come past. So that wasn't a farmer. It was a young lady that works for the Essex Wildlife Trust on her quad, checking on things. So we're walking down to the next hide now. Just see, so just had those couple of grey air and just squatted down in the field over there. Got a slight breeze. Not too bad and it's not too cold. The light's getting a bit better. Unfortunately in this sort of grey, gloomy light, you have to have fairly high ISO to compensate for your shutter speed. The faster the shutter speed, the higher the ISO, or the lower the f-stop to let more light in, because obviously you're going like that and it's grabbing not a lot of light. So you have to whack your ISO up. Luckily these cameras have got good ISO properties. So they're not too bad, but it's still grey light, which puts sort of that gloomy look on all your photographs. But, who cares? I'm still going to show you whether they're good or not. So I'm just getting some shots of some brank geese for you. They're the smaller geese at the front. It's just left that little flock, that little group, that little gaggle of brank geese at the front. And they can be called Brent or Brent, but they're a smaller goose with that nice little collar. I do like them. They're such a sweet little goose. And we've just had where we've just come from. Over there, the marsh harrier fly in front of the hide we was just sitting in. That's the way the mop flops. Right, so, we're coming up to the next hide now. Over there, there's another set of marshes. Little lagoons and that. So this is, it's not a far walk really. It's probably about 20, 20 minutes, 25 minutes from the car park this hide and then the reserve sort of goes round there and along the back there I think there's another hide over there but we're going up here now is the uh, there we go so that hide we was just in was round marsh hide this is upper fleet hide and then we're going to go to lower fleet hide so I presume these are the fleet marshes let's go and have a look in this rickety old shack I like the roof Right, so we're in the next hide. It's got the identification boards 
Right, they're all left. Which are nice. Also, it's got an ID board of different damselflies and dragonflies you can see here in the summer months. Which is also nice, but out here, look at this. At the moment, all we've got in front of us is a flock of sheep. And crows. And that's it. A little five minutes here, see what comes along. So yeah, a bit sparse apart from sheep. But we've got a flock of rooks. Now rooks are the cool vid, they look, they're like a big crow. With a longer build than a normal crow. And the back part is grey at the back sort of scaly because what they're doing at the moment is probing for worms and they'll get a soft piece of ground and if they was to have feathers going right up to the top of their bill like a normal covid or crow that would get covered in mud by the way they feed so they're probing into that dirt into the soil for bits and bobs to eat and that scaly grey end around its face stops its Feathers getting muddy basically. And they keep flapping up and flying down. However, oh, curlew. Okay. Right, we've got a curlew out there. Just heard by that sort of call. Don't know if you caught that on camera, but we've got a curlew out there. But it's a big expanse. Let me show you. That's where we're looking. That's where the rooks are. And over there somewhere is a curlew. Because we heard it. We just got a um, nice big flock of Brent geese in front of us. I don't think I've seen a flock as big as that. It's loads, it's got to be a couple of hundred there. I'll get a bit of footage. Because no doubt we've got a walk up there and that's where the hide is up there somewhere so we've got to walk over there so no doubt they'll all bugger off by the time we get there so we're going to take it slow down this little footpath and hopefully we get some closer shots of the brank geese but they're nice aren't they nice goose so we've got this group of brank geese over there that we've just seen a bit of footage of but we found something really interesting There's been a murder down here, and I'm going to show you, let's get the glasses on, I'm going to show you what I think did it. And this is quite a big animal, it's probably a Canada goose. So it's a big old bird for a bird of prey to take out. So I've got down there to look at the feathers. Now, hopefully these will be in certain shot, but if you look at the tips of these feathers, you can see that they've been snipped through and crushed at the end. There's a bit of flesh over here as well. By the looks of it, yeah, it's been torn out in a clump. So, if you look at that, that looks like something's got it and pulled it out where there'd more be sort of more individual feathers plucked out if it was a bird of prey. That's been, you can use your imagination, that's been nipped and pulled. Same as these feathers here, they'd been sheared off. So, what do you reckon? That'd be Mr. Fox. Because if there's a lot of geese around here, this bit here is a good bit of cover for a fox to get close up to something to make a dash, catch it in mid-air as it's taking off. And also, the other thing is, there's no carcass anywhere to be seen. So that means a fox will probably be the only animal we've got 
apart from a badger, but I can't see that being a badger that's picked that up and taken that away. That'd be a fox who's carried that away to eat somewhere else. There we go, look. Brent just taken off. So yeah, fox kill. And that's how you know. Snipped off feathers, crushed, bit of saliva at the end, where you see it's got his face into it. No carcass, big bird. Fox kill. God, look at that lot. So we're heading down to Lower Fleet Hyde now. Just see that nice flock of Brent geese in this field all just took off. And that bird kill. Or that fox kill, should I say. Um, now if that had been a bird of prey, the carcass would have still been there. However, you do get secondary pred predation on kills, so a, maybe a sparrow could take a bird down, eat its field and bugger off, and a fox will come across it and take the actual rest of it away, so then you have to do a bit of investigative work and look at the feathers, see if there's any tracks around, and then sometimes you'll get an idea of what you're looking at and what's done it. It's always worth stopping and having a little look. It's another part of tracking, is recognising feeding signs. So we're heading over to this other hide now, which is just in front of Nick. There's another owl box just over the back now, but it's ever so sparse around here today. And there we go. Onwards and upwards, let's see what's in here. So we're in the last hide right over the back of the reserve now there's a big flock of something just flown up over there you see that nick just over to your left yeah. it's just come up so we're keeping an eye on that because that sometimes means a bird of, bird of prey has gone through but we're going to hang around here for a little while we've got a nice swan in front of me which i'm getting you a bit of footage of everyone loves a swan don't they sitting there feeding the mute swan. As I said before, the male mute swan's got a big. It's called a knob. Don't know. Big knob on the top of its bill. And the bigger it is, if you've got one, two together, one's got a big one, and one's got a smaller one. The big one will be the male, and the smaller a female. But, um, I just heard my belly rumble. I think it might be my my sandwich time. Wow, just had a bit of excitement. These ducks, we were just sitting there talking. I just scoffed me my my sandwich, luckily, and got up and took some photographs, took a bit of footage of the teal and the mallards that are over there. And uh, Nick said, yeah, this is what we want to bring the uh, marsh areas in, a bit of duck action. And I'll just point my camera that way. And all of a sudden, right in front of us, appeared a flipping marsh area. And it flew off over there and I managed to get some shots even though I was faffing around because my camera was in flipping video mode but I've got two little buttons on the top but you've got to press the right ones haven't you so I managed to get some shots of it flying off happy flipping days check these out
nice that uh, few shots of that. I think that's a young female marsh area. Also, like, we've been here, I don't know, a couple of hours now. I've seen quite a bit. Don't sweat the small stuff when you're out. Even if it's a flock of sparrows, just stop and look and photograph them. Sometimes you get some beautiful sparrows when you look at them close up are beautiful birds. So don't overlook them. Starlings, fantastic bird. They're just everywhere and people overlook them. Pigeons, you know, you never know when you might see a stock dove or something like that. And ducks also, always look into a flock of ducks because you might have another duck, different type of duck, joining that flock of ducks. Same as geese, you'll always get, like, if you've got a flock of Canada geese, you might get a pink foot or a grey leg or something like that in amongst that flock of flock of geese. Because there's safety in numbers. So you don't know. You don't know what you're going to see. So always look. Actually, we're hiding from the weather at the moment because it's absolutely piddling down. But I'm pretty sure we've got, well, we both reckon, you reckon it's grey plover as well, mate, don't you now? It's got a black armpit. It's a little wading bird, little short bird. Yeah, I think that's a grey plover. It's got a, I think we've seen a grey plover. We've also got some shovelers out in front of us as well. And we've just heard the bearded tits. Just opposite where we're standing. But I'll show you. It is looking grim, but that over there is where we've heard the bearded tits call. And they've got sort of a sort of call. Starts off high and then drops. We've heard those, but we keep getting this cloud blow over. It's a bit cold, let me tell you that. But we keep getting these showers blowing and through over the top of us. But we're persevering. We've had a couple of nice things coming, like that little grey plover. Pretty sure that's what it was. And that marsh area, that was a nice spot, nice uh, spot that. Like that. Just keeping their eyes out for the bearded ticks now, see if one of them flies up. But they don't like the wind at all. And they'll stay down low in the reeds. Where it's too thick to see through, so. Yeah. Cold, but we've seen a few bits. Happy days. Alright, so we're still out here. Toughing it out. It's a bit nippy. We've just got some nice shell ducks on this lagoon in front of us. I'll put a bit of footage up for you now of these shell ducks. They're a really nice duck, quite a large duck. They're white, mostly white with black and brown on them. But they've got a very distinctive big orange bill. Beautiful duck. Yes! We've just got the male uh, hen harrier come through. So I'll show you that as well. Beautiful grey bird. Flipping lovely. Nick noticed it flying across. He was like, Marsh, no, hen harrier. No, no. Uh, hen harrier. But it was the male hen harrier. So if you go back to my last video at Wallacey Island, you see the female hen harrier, which is also known as a ringtail. This was the male. And uh, to get that go through was absolutely beautiful. Beautiful grey bird. Beautiful, beautiful grey bird. And I've got some shots, so hopefully... That one. Yeah, that's it, yeah. Hopefully, I'll show you. I've got some shots. There's Nick's book. Hang on, let's bring him around. So that's the bird we got. And that's the bird I've got at Wallace Island, the top bird. But, happy flipping days. We're well excited now. We're doing a bit of leg rubbing. Oh, flipping lovely. Happy days. I'll stick these shots up now. And I'll see if I can find the female hen harrier shot and I'll put one of those in with it and I'll put on male and female so you can see the difference. There's a total, total complete difference between the two birds, which is called being it's sexually dimorphic. So it means each 
the, each sex is a completely different colour to the other one, so you know what's what. So, absolutely fantastic. We're well happy with that. Have a look at these shots. <laughs> female marsh area pitched up in a bush can't quite see what the bush is looks like a hawthorn pitched up right over the back there i'll swing it around so you can see what i'm looking at it's on my screen now i'll put the footage up but that's if you can see how far away it is it's a flipping long way away a long long way away but that's the female marsh area so today We've seen a sub-adult female marsh area. This is a female marsh area, an adult female. We've seen a male hen harrier. Well happy. Right, all we need is a short ear down now and we've capped the day off. Day. We've had quite a good day today. Where's Nick? Here he is. Cracking day. We've had a really good day today. Well, safe day. We've been out since, what time did we get here? About nine o'clock, yeah, I think. Nine got about nine o'clock, and it's now half past two. Lights going. Didn't see a shortly on the way back, but that male hen harrier and the marsh areas. Was it a hen harrier, was it? I thought it was a seagull. No. <laughs> it weren't. It weren't. No, it was definitely a don't, don't crush my dreams. Day. Yeah, no. Happy flipping day. So, anyway, yeah. But sometimes, if people say, that's nah, no good over there, go and have a look yourself, which is what we did. And it paid off. So, anyway, I'm going to wrap that one up here. We're going to go back. And I'm going to go in and have a nice cup of tea because I'm flipping cool, damp, and hungry now. Anyway. You take care. Thanks very much for watching. You stay safe, stay sane. I'll catch you on the flip side. Journey well. Bye.